that's not what yeah. I get there. Right, we're going down to the first year lab to see a wonderful instrument, a musical instrument called a theremin. So this is all to do with the phenomenon of resonance and a really neat way of bringing across the concept of resonance is as you'll see with this, this instrument called the theremin. Developed in the 1920s by a Russian physicist called, uh, let's see, so he was known in Russia as Lev Sergeyevich Terman aka Le Leon Theremin in the West. So you've got a black box here, you've got an aerial here, you've got a lead coming out here and you've got one knob. You don't uh, pluck it, you don't strum it, you don't bow it, you don't um, hit it with your hands, in fact you don't touch it. And what you do is actually pull notes out of the air. What I'm doing is by changing my hand position with respect to this antenna, you can see I'm changing the pitch of the notes. Anybody who's a Led Zeppelin fan will have seen one of these. Jimmy Page uses these in the live version a whole lot of love. I got this about a, oh, two weeks ago now. I've wanted a theremin since I think I was about 10. Um, it was such a, such a cool instrument. But the important thing is that you can make all these weird noises. And I know there are some people out there who, um, for example, mightn't be Led Zeppelin fans and mightn't have come across a theremin in a sort of rock concert um, forum before. But in fact, if you're a fan of 60s movies, if you're a fan of science fiction, the, whole, the entire soundtrack to The Day the Earth Stood Still is based around a theremin. What it is, at its core, is a resonance circuit. So that singing note that you can hear is due to the fact that we've got um, a circuit that is resonating at a particular frequency. And this idea of resonance crops up time and time again. Got this for, from Slovenia for my children a few uh, months back. It's a really quite neat demonstration of, of, or simple demonstration of resonance. So what we have is a little dog on the spring. So it's going to bounce up and down, and it bounces up and down at its natural frequency. Okay. And if you change the mass on the end of the, of the spring, if you change the dog's weight or get him to hold something, then this will bounce up and down at a different frequency. Or if you change the, the spring um, constant, if you change the stiffness of the spring, you'll get a different resonant frequency. How does that connect to this instrument? The way this, that connects to this instrument is that what you have in here is a circuit that resonates. So what's resonating in that circuit? It's obviously not something bouncing up and down um, quite like this mechanically. What it is is electric charge is sloshing about in that circuit. And the reason that Theremin got interested in, the, in building this particular instrument, well, there are a number of different reasons. First of all, his initial ideas were not to use it as a musical instrument, but actually to detect, to, to detect an intruder. So as you walk in, you can hear that. You don't need to be, and in fact, this is a, a relatively cheap theremin. The, the, the more expensive versions, you get much greater sensitivity. So the charge, the best way to think about charge, or a really good analogy to draw, is to think about how water flows. So you've got this water that's flowing back and forth, or electrons that are flowing back and forth at a particular rate. In this box, we have two key things, one of which is called an inductor, and that's equivalent, effectively, to the mass of this, this dog, and the other which is called a capacitor. And that capacitor is related, is, is analogous to the, the, the stiffness of this spring. Now, how, how do we get these notes? Where do these come from? <laughs> Where do we get these notes? The method by which I'm changing those notes is by moving my hand back and forth, I'm changing the capacitance of this circuit. In, in effect, I am being part of the capacitor. Okay, so what's a capacitor? Well, a capacitor is a really, really simple electronic device or electrical device, which is just two parallel plates. Best way to think about it is you've got two parallel plates, and importantly, those plates can store a charge. So you can charge up a capacitor, you can discharge a capacitor, and it will charge and discharge at a particular rate. And that rate is set, in this case, by, we've got a capacitor in here, but we also have got another capacitor, which is given by the separation of my hand and this area. 
And that additional capacitance, that additional charge storing, because I'm actually, there's actually charge flowing, is sets what frequency this particular circuit will resonate at. So there isn't current as such flowing back and forth here, but the, this uh, antenna can affect the charges in me. And those charges can in turn affect the charges here, and that gives rise. So we're coupled together, even though we're not physically connected, and even though there's no electricity coupled, uh, there's no electricity flowing across this gap, we're still coupled together. We're what part of one sort of integrated circuit. So when I play a note here, for example, the capacitance, the, the distance between my hand and this aerial means that I affect the rate at which this charge sloshes back and forth in the circuit. And then when I move it in, now the distance between the two plates, as it were, between this and my hand, has changed. And so that resonant frequency, the capacitance has changed. Therefore, the rate at which charge can slosh back and forth has changed. And therefore, you hear a different note. Right.